Luke 23:34 Then Jesus said Father forgive them for they know not what they do I want to ponder around the theme for a few moments lessons concerning forgiveness Lessons <clears throat> concerning forgiveness. Here we are at the final moments of the earthly life and ministry of Jesus. He has now been placed upon a cross. This was a death performed by the Roman government, encouraged by his own people. It is something, brothers and sisters, that the people that are sometimes most closest to you will be the ones that will hurt you the most. Those who are the most closest to you that will plot your downfall. He is surrounded by people who are mocking and scoffing him. Yet he is also placed between two criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. And they too join in the crowd in mocking Jesus. They're those who divide his clothes and among themselves. Others are questioning his validity as the Messiah. He is being told that if he is the Messiah, save yourself and save us. Notwithstanding in all of this, Jesus utters a prayer to the Father. This is not a prayer of complaint. He does not call his enemies haters. He does not say that my haters are my elevators. He, however, speaks a prayer of concern for those who are against him. One of the greatest blessings is to be able that you and I have is to be able to pray for those who despitefully use us. Thus Jesus pleads with his father, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Isn't that an interesting question? Jesus, are you serious? Do you really mean that? How, do, how can you say that they do not know what they're doing? Well, they, uh, evidently, they are conscious of who, of what they're doing, the actions that are being performed, but right. they did not realize the identity of the one of whom they were doing it to. Yeah. They did not realize that as the creation, they were putting to death their creator. Oh my God. He came unto his own, his own didn't receive him. But to them that did receive him, to them he gave power. Huh? Jesus says, forgive them. Yeah. For they know not what they do. Isn't that an interesting reversal? Oh my God. Huh? For Luke, if you read the gospel of Luke, Jesus is full of reversals. For you will often find Jesus going against societal norms. Jesus, you will discover, will often find himself celebrating women. That's a reversal. Jesus is oftentimes seen hanging out with sinners. That's a reversal. Some, and Jesus will often proclaim that the last will be first and the first will be last. That is a reversal. And in this text tonight, we find another reversal. Jesus changes and he says, Father, I want you to forgive them for their ignorance, for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, Jesus could have called down a legion of angels. Yes, Jesus, because he is fully God and 
fully man. God, Jesus could have said, he could have evaporated them. He could have set them ablaze with the very words of his power. Yeah, yeah. Yet Jesus yes, sir. being the surrendering Savior yes. became obedient unto death. According to the text, he says, forgive them. Each of us can remember how Christ has forgiven us of the very things that we have done, whether by omission or commission. Of course, we've acted in ways that were contrary. However, Jesus has forgiven us. What does this utterance teach us? Give me four more minutes and I'm out of here. Jesus demonstrates that we never have to act like our enemies. That's right. You see, Jesus is facing a, another temptation upon the cross, and that temptation is treat the people like they're treating me. I could, and Jesus has enough power to do just that. Yet Jesus says, I'm not going to let anybody take away my capacity to love. I have spent three years preaching and telling to love your enemies and do good to them that despitefully use you. And now upon the cross, I've got to do the same. Jesus had every opportunity to act just like his enemies. But the greatest test, of, I've got to move on, that the greatest test is when you can be a bigger person and not act like everybody else. My God, my God. Yes, sir. It's become the object of mistreatment, yes, sir. being violated and oppressed. But Jesus never gives up his capacity to love. Martin Luther King gave much of his time to fighting racial oppression. He had been ill-treated and thrown into prison. What many do not know is there were moments when Dr. King almost gave up on the struggle. But there was something within him that pushed him to say, I'm going to continue to love. I'm going to continue to forgive. And it was that love that prompted him to say, I've been to the mountaintop. It was that love and that forgiveness that prompted him to say, I have a dream. And, and like Martin and like Jesus, never let anybody cause you to give up on your capacity to love. And forgive. But let me say this, and I'm through. But this forgiveness teaches us that there is nobody beyond the scope of forgiveness. All of us can be forgiven. Isn't that good news? The drunk can be forgiven. The liar can be forgiven. The backbiter can be forgiven. The murderer can be forgiven. The manipulator can be forgiven. Can I get a witness? Just as Jesus forgave the loneliest of sinners, we must demonstrate that same action. Today as we come to Good Friday, let's celebrate the fact Let's be like Jesus. That's right. Let's have the capacity to love one another. Yeah. Even love those who have don't love us back. That's right. Remember that Jesus loved us yeah. and he forgave us. No wonder we can declare amazing grace yeah. shall always be yeah. my song of praise. Yeah. For it was grace yeah. that brought my liberty. Yeah. I do not know just why he came to love 
coming soon. But, 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 but he looked beyond my eyes and he saw my knees. Yeah. I shall forever lift my eyes yeah. to Calvary, yeah. to the cross yeah. where Jesus died for me. How marvelous! Yes, Lord. That grace that brought my pardon so he looked beyond my father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 